In this video, we're gonna have a look at the Audi RS3 sedan and compare it to the BMW M2, and then I'm gonna let you know which one I would personally buy of these two. They're very similar when it comes to spec and tech and also price. The RS3 sedan has 401 horsepower and 359 pound-feet of torque from a 2.5 liter turbo five-cylinder engine. It comes with all-wheel drive, quattro of course, but it only comes with a seven-speed automatic. However, this seven-speed automatic that we have in all this RS3 actually works as an automated manual, meaning you can rev it up to the rev limiter and it's gonna bounce uh, you know, up at the red line it, without shifting itself. So I think that's pretty cool. And 0 to 60, this is quick. Thanks to the four wheel drive, it does 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds. And I think you can unlock the top speed to be around 170 or 180 miles per hour in this car, which is also nuts for this tiny little thing. It costs $60,095 at the base. So the BMW M2 comes with a three liter inline six. And I love that they kept the inline six for the uh, 2023 M2. It has a turbo and 453 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. Rear wheel drive only, proper BMW driver's car with a six speed manual as standard here in, here in the US, zero to 60. It's, it's got more power than the Audi, but because it's rear wheel drive, it does 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds, which is half a second slower than the RS3 in the, with, with a manual. But if you choose to go with the eight speed auto, it does the same sprint in about 3.9 seconds. I would definitely go with the manual even though I lose 0.2 of a second. The starting price of the M2 is going to be around $62,200, so about $2,000 more than the RS3. All right, so now let's talk about what's really important here when it comes to cars, any type of cars. What really matters is obviously the designs. So we're gonna have a look at both these cars right now, the RS3 and the BMW M2 here side by side in the front and then side and rear and also talk about the interior because there's some crazy stuff going on there that we need to talk about. So talking about big grills, uh, BMW is getting a lot of heat for <laughs> having big grills, but just look at this Audi grill right here. This is just massive. It's like a whale mouth swallowing all the plankton that's coming in its way. And we also have the headlights being pretty, they, they look pretty big here, in my opinion. I think they can shrink them down a little bit. And one detail, I, I do think it's a, it's a um, neat, it's a, it's a handsome front face. I don't mind the big grill here. I think it suits this front end more than it does in certain BMW models. It suits this front end better, but it's, it's, a, it's a big black area in the front end. But what I don't like about this front end is this detail right here. I don't like this corner and that it goes into this piece and doesn't have a clear connection to this lower piece. It, this area right here feels very tense and it doesn't have a nice flow to it. And I also think we could skip this air intake here because it just adds more busyness to the design. Maybe cover this up with some green. I think, if I remember correctly, I did make a redesign of the RS3 uh, to make it a little bit more horizontal in, in the front end and shrank down the headlights. And also, I think I uh, redesigned this piece as well. If I find it, I'm going to put it in right here in the video. One really cool detail are these lights. Audi, as you know, they were the first with the LED lights in the first generation Audi R8, which just blew everybody's minds and then everybody started copying that. And I think they're uh, ahead of the game when it comes to lighting design still today, because these LEDs right here can uh, visualize the RS3 letters when you start up the car. A cool little detail, a little gimmick, but it's still, uh, you know, innovative and something new from Audi. So looking at the BMW here, I, it, this is a... This is one of the most interesting designs for me personally this year, because when I first saw it, I thought, what the heck did BMW do with this design? It's super geometrical, doesn't have a nice flow anywhere to it, and the graphic features feels very static and very much not like the previous generation M2, which, ha which was a gorgeous design with a beautiful face. 
this feels like almost like a product design but the more i look at this and the more i read about this design the more interesting it becomes i, I this is one of these designs that that's been growing on me the most specifically when i read that all these air intakes these squared air intakes they all serve a specific purpose for cooling the brakes, the oil. And what that does to me, it sort of justifies this design. And if you, if someone asks why you bought a BMW M2 when it looks like this, you can refer, you have some backup to refer back on by telling them that this is actually functional and everything serves a purpose. So I don't think this is, uh, uh, you know, as bad as I initially thought it was gonna be and I think it's going to look even better when I see it in real life I really do like this design and this the performance of the new M2 as well looking at the side view I think yes the RS3 obviously is a is a four-door uh, sedan while the M2 is still a proper two-door coupe but they do have a similar proportion and similar volumes to it with the greenhouse being a little longer on the RS3 obviously to house the rear passengers and the doors and you have the A pillar starting a bit sooner on the RS3 as well you have the engine sitting in front of the front axle which has been a big problem for RS models in the past the RS4 for example the first generation had a big problem with understeer However, what Audi has done here in this generation is work with the rear differential. So the rear differential can send all the power back to the rear wheels and it can even send the power to a specific side of the wheel to kind of turn, to force the turn in a corner if, if it's starting to understeer by putting power to the outside rear wheel. And I think from what I've read from driving this car, it works really well and it doesn't have this understeer problem that a lot of different Audis had in the past. I really like this side view. I think it's a gorgeous design because we have this tight shoulder line right here, a nice beautifully flowing greenhouse at the top and simple lines. And you also have this widened fender in the RS3 model, which I absolutely love. And one detail is this air outlet right here. Reminds me a little bit of the Porsche Taycan style of that this specific area and it makes it look a lot more aggressive than the normal a3 for example even though it is a very tiny graphic detail but most of the time those details that they add on a rs model like this to separate it from the from the normal a3 they build up and together they create a very a much more aggressive design for the car i'm not a huge fan of this rear bumper i think it sticks out too far too low so it makes it feel, at least from a side view, a little rear heavy with this mass or this volume sticking out so much at that low point. Now looking at the BMW down here, this is probably my favorite view of the M2. I think it looks super tight. It reminds me of one of my favorite BMWs of all time, the 1M. And on top of that, we still have super wide fenders like we have in the Audi. But as you can see, there's a lot more squared off here. And I, I love this treatment of uh, the new M2 widened fenders. And then we have this dip going in here in the door, creating this shelf in the bottom. Also very static design. And it almost looks like, a, as, as I said in the previous video, like a DTM body kit that's melted in a more beautiful way for production in the M2. But it definitely feels a lot more aggressive than the normal 2 series. And think about this. It's a smaller car than the M3, but it's just as wide as the M3. So it's a tight package, super wide and low, and I really love that about the BMW. And we have 20-inch wheels in the rear and 19s in the front. I believe the RS3 has 19s all around. What I would love to have is, nine, it is 20s in the front of the uh, M2 as well. I'm not a huge fan of having bigger wheels in the rear than we have in the front it kind of makes it look a little comical in, in some cars but here it looks pretty good i think that has to do with the the wheels themselves being black and these are probably the wheels that i would pick for the m2 if i was buying this car myself one interesting point here to notice is the starting point of the a pillar so it starts around this point on the rs3 and that is as i said because it's a four-door but look at how far back the a pillar starts on the m2 compared to the RS3, it's almost a foot further backwards, creating a much more sporty look. And I think uh, it would be cool to see the RS3 as a coupe, a two-door coupe, 
with an almost like a, a sedan rear end. It would be interesting to see. Now looking at the rear end of these cars. So looking at the Audi, you can see the clean lines that I talked about. We have this nice sharp shoulder line. We have a typical Audi line at the bottom here going into the bumper, creating the, the upper uh, limit for the bumper in the rear end. But then we have this graphic. So this bumper, as I showed you in the side view, sticks out a little bit too far for my taste. And what adds to the feeling of it being, uh, you know, dragging the, the rear end down is this plastic graphic that has these dips going down on the sides, further pulling down the weight in the rear end. I would do something differently with this design. Maybe just have it one slot like this and remove this, have this be body colored or something like that to not have it look so rear heavy. But I love this diffuser. We have two bazooka tailpipes, ovals right here, typical Audi RS style tailpipes in black. And we have this nice, probably some carbon fiber piece you can add to your uh, RS3 if you want. And look at how beautifully the, the shoulder line goes into the tail lights and then creates the chamfer line for where you have the Audi logo here and then wraps around of course, at the exact same point on the other side. I think the line flow in the Audi is a lot better than in the BMW M2. There are two completely different designs and it's pretty weird to think about BMW as being a more geometric design because I'm not used to BMW being that. They used to be more flow and elegance before, but now they're moving into this more architectural approach to their design. But same thing here as with the front view, this is really growing on me right now and I can't really tell you why. I think it has to do with this almost, uh, they don't really care about uh, elegance and beauty. It's more like 100% function in this design. And I think that's what's making it more beautiful than it was before to me when I read about what all these different parts actually do in the car. However, I do think the taillights sit too low and I made a redesign of this as well, moving the taillights further up just a couple of inches to have some more balance in, uh, in the rear end and some more dynamic movements. Now it sits right in the middle of uh, this housing for the graphic features, which creates a static movement, doesn't really have any movement up or down. So moving the taillights further up, I think that would give it a lift and also make it look more powerful looking at it from a rear view. I do kind of like this treatment, this housing for the reflector right here in the parking sensor, it goes back to the front end and ties in with the front end graphics. So at least in the BMW M2, we have a continuous design when it comes to the graphics of the car, all around the car, from the front to the side even with this squared out wheel arches right here and the squared out uh, side skirt and also in the rear with the graphics in the rear end being very squarish and also the diffuser down here. I love that they decided to go with the four tailpipes, typical BMW E46 style or E39 M5 style of the, of the diffuser in the lower back. So last but not least, last ha la let's have a look at the interiors of these two cars. The thing is, I don't... I'm not a specifically a fan of either of these interiors. I think the Audi, yes, it does have a housing for the, uh, the, the gauge cluster here, which is all digital, as you can see right here. But look, it feels like it sits too high, and then you have these air vents sort of stacked on top of the gauge cluster, making it look a little too high, in my opinion. I want to remove these and have better visibility out and have them maybe somewhere here and here and then move the screen further to the right. But it's still a pretty decent looking interior. I think the quality, build quality of Audi's interiors have always been uh, decent and I think that continues with the Audi RS3 as well. But what the, I, I would say the biggest disappointment for me in the M2 is that they decided to just, you know, be a little lazy with the interior design here and just add this big screen on top of the dash and call it a day. There is no integration of this big screen in any way into the dash. I think we could have designed it better and be more interesting and have some more warmth to it, as I talked about so many times, by adding some sort of framing for this uh, dash and not just have it be like a randomized, uh, you know, third party item that they just stuck on there after they designed the interior and called it done. I want to have some more frame framing around it and have it be a lot better integrated than this in the dash. It's probably very uh, practical to have it 
like this, a screen right here, and then you have the infotainment system right next to it. But to me, it just doesn't look good. And I think interiors, they should feel homey and they shouldn't be this uh, cold and architectural approach to the, to the interiors of, of the cars, no matter what the outside looks like. So which one of these would I buy? If I were to buy one of these today, they cost about the same, starting at $62,000, let's say, for both of these cars. I love the performance of both of these. I love the Quattro that we have in the Audi, but I also am a huge fan of BMW for only sticking to a proper manual setup with the manual transmission and all rear wheel drive only. You can't get it now. You probably will in the competition later as a four wheel drive car. So for me, if I were to buy this, I would go for the BMW M2. I think it's a fantastic car when it comes to performance. I think the design is very interesting and the way it's growing on me has taken me by surprise. So I would love to have this in the garage and analyze the design more uh, by myself and kind of let it grow on me when I see it in real life as well. So for me, I would go with the BMW M2.